Hey, Fitzy here, back at the game with another one. Finally getting at the Vista Cruiser wagon. One of the big jobs on this Vista Cruiser wagon that we got to do is we got to replicate a 442 hood for it. Now you can buy a hood, um, but in order to put a 442 hood on this, we got to change the entire front, put different bumpers, grills, all that type of stuff. I'm not quite sure if the fenders are the same or not. Uh, but what we're going to do, we're going to incorporate the 442 scoops into the factory Vista Cruiser hood. And we're going to sit down and we're going to make them with basic tools and an old hood off a 2000 GMC truck. Stick around. She's back in the shop. Okay, uh, we're getting back at this one now. If you're not familiar with this one, this is a uh, 70, 72. Anyway, it's a cutlass a Vista Cruiser wagon uh, sent by one of my uh, subscribers, uh, Ben Skeleton from North Carolina. And he's asked me to do the car. So I usually don't take on big jobs, but I figured uh, it would be pretty interesting to have a car sent up to me to do. So I took this one on. Uh, there's a lot of work on this car in terms of just some lower work I've done, bottom defenders, you know, typical doors, little lower sections on the quarter, small stuff. Uh, but the big job on this one is this hood. Uh, Ben's plan for this car is to make like a 442 Olds uh, Vista Cruiser wagon out of it, like a clone style thing. And uh, they came with a 442 hood. Now, if you ever priced up them hoods, they're very expensive. Um, the Vista Cruiser wagon hood is a bit different than the uh, 442 hood. So what we're going to do is we're going to incorporate the 442 scoops into this one here. So we're going to build a couple of scoops for this. Uh, what we have is, uh, my whole plan is to turn around. I'm going to sit down now and measure everything up and find out what I'm going to do. This hood, as you can see there, it's got damage on it, so it's not a mint hood. Uh, all that will be looked after the whole point with this. Now, most people will probably cut the center out of this and raise it up and stuff like that. I don't like doing that on hoods, okay? The hood gets weak, everything moves, uh, it drops the whole nine yards. I like spilling the scoop on top of the hood, and when it's all built and all the shapes are done, then I'll cut the, the bottom section out of it. I find it a lot better because uh, it's you got structural strength there to do the scoop, okay? Uh, a lot of people say, you know, well, you know, it's just a matter of cutting this off here, raising it up and putting a vent in there. It's not that easy, okay? There's a lot of simple little shapes that had to be addressed, crowns. Uh, you can't have really sharp corners on 90 degree angles. All that plays a part in it, right? So what I usually do is I find another donor. What I got over here is a hood off a 2000 shed truck. I'm going to use this as the donor. Now, it's still not long enough for the entire scoop. I'm going to have to build sections on the front of the scoop, but I'm going to get most of the scoop out of this. So it's amazing enough, the whole length of that hood is not as long as what the scoop is, which only goes from there to here, okay? Uh, so that's what we're going to be doing with that. Um, I got these vents up here that got to be uh, filled in, and uh, the scoop's got to be made. So I'm going to go and measure up and... Uh, start figuring out measurements to figure out how I'm going to go about making this. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I've gone ahead and I've taken the measurements that I've been given and I've done a bunch of measurements here. What you see here now is basically this is the width of it and this is the drop off and the drop off stands up more, but it only goes off about an inch or so off the side of it. And then it goes off like two and a half inches on the back. Uh, as you can see, it runs into the vent. I got to get rid of them vents. Uh, the problem I'm running into here right now, everything else seems to be working pretty good. The way the scoop is, I'll put up some pictures here, okay? And on these scoops, if you look at them, you'll notice that the uh, center of the scoop itself is parallel to the center line of the hood and also is parallel to the outside edge of the hood, okay? Uh, this is the problem I'm running into. Right here, if you look here, the distance from here to here, okay, is an inch longer than from here to here. This line here does not go parallel to anything, okay? This line here, is this center line here, is parallel to this seam out here. So the problem I'm running into is if you run, look over here, is the crease kind of like fades out and goes over the top of it. It goes through without a bit of an angle like this. So I got some issues up here and right here I got to deal with. Um, 
<clears throat> because this is the different style hood, uh, like the 442 hood only ends across here, okay? But that's not a real concern. I can round off these edges here and make this look good here and also on the back. It's just that I'm trying to figure out the flow when it goes down off of this side here. And this here section here on the 442 is the same height as here, okay? But it's not. If you look at it here, there's a fair bit of a jump from here to here. So I got some things that I got to tend with there. I can't go cutting up the hood and flattening it all out because you start running into a whole lot of nightmares, okay? I gotta try to make this scoop flow in to this hood, okay? So the thing with it is, is I got to have the side of it parallel here. This here has to be parallel. If I was thinking about making it wider, but what I'm noticing the front is a little tiny bit wider than the back on the factory cars, okay? Uh, I have a whole bunch of measurements that were given to me off a factory scoop and uh, I, the measurements are showing that that there's uh, I think there's about a half an inch difference here this here uh, is a half inch smaller than this section here so it all works out um, what I'm going to go and do I have an idea what I'm doing now and how much metal I need so I'm going to take this hood now and I'm going to cleave that up measure everything off it and cut two sections out because when I build this I'm going to build both of these at the same time because this is the left and the right. Every time I make two or three bends, I'm going to go over here and make two or three bends on our piece of steel. It's a lot easier when you're coming to building something that sits so close to each other and there's two of them that to build two of them at the same time. When you start putting five or six bends in this here and starts grinding and welding and tacking and doing it all, when you come over to this one here, you're going to have a hard time making it look like this one here. I went over this in another video where I made two mounts at the same time. This is the same process. I got to build both of these scoops at the same time. So I'm going to go ahead now and haul over this hood and uh, get that stripped down. So here's what I got done. I got the, uh, the hood marked out here. Now this is really big because I want to be able to fold the edges and everything over. And got to cut nice and long. The front of the scoop got a bit of a turn on so I could probably use this metal here. That should flatten out pretty good anyway. But, uh, and I'm going to cut it right off across the edge here. And this will be one side, one scoop, and that will be the other scoop over there. People are going to say, now Tony, why don't you just start with fresh metal? Um, the biggest problem with starting with fresh metal is that right off the bat you're going to have to do a lot of uh, English wheel work, okay? And that's time consuming. Uh, I like using these panels for the big reason that, you know, everything's got a bit of a crown on it, if you look at them, right? There's a small crown on that panel there, and that's what I got it for. The crown is already there. So when it's all said and done, I guess it all folded, the center of the scoop will be flat. Um, you would think just looking at a scoop that is uh, it's just a square box and it's flat, it's not, okay? Um, the biggest issue you, you see with people making scoops and everything using flat steel is when it's all said and done, it is flat. It's a squared off panel, it's got flat. There's no panel on a car that is truly flat. Uh, it almost looks like it's contoured the other way when it's all made. It's always nice to have a nice crown panel to start with, and this is why I like using all this aftermarket stuff for you know hoods off other cars and whatever because the panels are already in it or the, the contours are already in it so when i start folding it up the center will have a nice graceful flow to the middle of it right so i'm going to go ahead now i'm going to cut these two sections out so we'll have the two sections for the scoops so i got them two sections cut out they're a bit tricky because they were fully sealed up here so i dig a, a potty knife and uh cut it all out right well, a bit of work but there's didn't mind that so much, it wasn't that. But this is what I got here now. I got one panel put here, and there's a small bit of rust up there. But I went and laid one in place, and I realized that I only need the front of this got a little small bit of a curve on the front of it, goes down to the scoop. So I wanted to use this front section for it and the overall length. So what I've decided now, I'm going to make the back and weld it on across, but the two sides will fall down. And then the front will basically just be a little bit of this lip here. So I'll cut this off along here somewhere when I figure out the overall length. And then I'll just bend it down, right? But uh, you never throw out shapes. Just look at this one here, look. It's a nice little shape there, look. It's the makings of like a hot rod quarter panel or something, right? Rolling up like that there. And then cut it along here. And then you got to just make the upper section of it. But you got a nice panel there. And it's got like a turn on it this way, right? So... You don't throw nothing out, I'm going to put that in inventory. Here's a closer look at what I was talking about, crown panels. See, you would think this hood is flat, okay? This is two side sections, but there is a very slight crown on that panel. This is what makes the difference in making something look right and, and it don't look right. Uh, having uh, panels that are made, looks like it's made out of plywood, is uh, 
it's always been tricky. Fellas make scoops and they always like just don't look right. And a lot of it is because there's no crown in them, right? So this here got a slight crown on it this way and it got a slight crown this way. This is the reason why I'm using this recycled metal. Uh, I could have took a flat piece of steel and spent a couple hours uh, crowning it up and uh, getting it just so. The problem I would have had is I would have had to make two and um, trying to make two identical uh, can run into it because a few extra passes and then you're in trouble. It's different if it was on the left and the right side of the car in terms of, uh, you know, you can't look at both sides. Problem I got with this is these scoops are right next to each other on the car. So the problem with this is they got to have the same uh, appearance left to right. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do now is start figuring out uh, all my measurements. I'm going to figure out how long I want it to be. I want to get this angle because this here don't look right. Uh, this here looks better. Uh, from what I've looked in, the, in the, the pictures, this here line here is parallel to the front of the scoop on both sides. So I'm going to do the same thing over here and figure it out. Figure out what lengths it got to be so I can get a number. And I'm just going to basically start making one piece, cut it, make the second piece, cut it. And then I'm going to go from there. So I'm just going to do two of them at the same time, uh, one step at a time. So for now, I just got to find out my overall lengths and my angles. So I got to figure it out. There's my angle. You can see it there. That's parallel to that there. And that's parallel to that there. So this section right here now is the piece I'm going to make. Okay. I turned around up here. The back was good. This is parallel to the back of this here. Going down along here. So it will flow nice with that. That's parallel. Uh, what I'm going to make the back section. I'm going to make off the car. I'm going to make that just separate. The two sides are going to be folded over on that piece. And of course then from here forward I'll make each individual side and the front section uh, separate again. But the uh, this here is the flat section on the top that I'm concerned about. I want to get the measurements on it. So I come over here then and I played around with the measurements. I put some marker lines on it here. Uh, over here I come in three inches because it only needs like two and a half or inch, inches or something on the front side of the scoop here. About to here. So when I fold that over that'll... Um, That'll give me lots of access. Back here is only an inch, so a lot of that will be trimmed off. And the back side. And then I measured over from here. Uh, from that line, I measured over 16 inches. And I drew another straight line parallel to that. So this here, i got two parallel lines drawn on this now. It's hard to see. It's in black marker. And then what I went and did is I squared off the back side of it. I took the square over here. Then I squared that up. Let's just pretend that's square, that's close enough. And then I'm going to square it up on that outside edge. Then I came over to this corner here and I measured this corner here. Okay? So that would be my angle there. And so all I did then is I come over here. I had my little compass here. That was the measurement I took. That was the measurement I found. And then I just measured it back here. You can see the measurement. I measured back from a square line. And then I drew that line over to there. So that was my angle on the back side. I hope you understand that. It's uh, pretty well straightforward and simple. Uh, but I don't know if I explained it right. But anyway, so I got my angle on the back. I got my angle on the front. And I can do nothing with the back. The back is almost perfect. There's a little bit uh, of extra there. And I can worry about it. I'm just going to concern about now. I must get this cut off. So I can get the two ends folded over. So I'm going to get this one cut off. And then I'm going to get this one over on the bench. And I'm going to measure all that one up. And get that one marked out. And get that one cut off. I don't want to get ahead of myself. You're going to want to get excited and start bending metal up. But what's going to end up happening, you're going to get ahead of yourself and uh, you're going to not know the proper angles on everything. So one step at a time. So I have the two of them cut off and laid in place, just checking to see what they looks like. Uh, remember the big roll was on the front of the hood. Uh, there's not a big roll there now. But these scoops, when they come forward, they start to taper off on the front side of it. Uh, I'll show you here in the picture. And uh, that's the reason why I left this here. Now, when I bend this over at a 90, that's going to straighten this up. I'll just cut into that there and relieve that and let that fall back down again to where it needs to be. But uh, the next thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to clean these panels up. So I got them panels stripped. All it is, I stripped the outer edge and where I got to make the fold. I left the center alone for the simple fact that I don't want to go putting too much heat in there right now. And besides, as you can see, I got a nice shine on it. Well... You can actually keep an eye on it to make sure that everything is looking good and whatever. I'll clean all that after when I go to do the rest of the hood. Uh, bottom side of it is all stripped off completely. Got everything removed from it. Got all that done. Now I got to put the bends on it. I got them marked here on both sides. So I'm going to put two bends in this now. And uh, there's 
going to be an issue that's going to run into it. Again, when I talk about crown panels, crown panels, the scoop is not straight either, okay? I'm just going to put a 90 degree bend in this, and I'm going to take it from there and explain to you uh, some of the issues I'm running into, different ways you can probably fix it, and how I'm going to fix it. Now I went ahead and I bent them along them edges that I got made there, so I got a, a, a crisp edge on both sides. Uh, the problem you're going to run into is like now, this got a nice crown going on here, but as it gets to the back of the panel, this drops down. Okay, this is low here. I don't know if you can see it or not. I can get it at an angle, you might be able to see it. It's hard to see, but anyway, uh, that is down there. This edge here, okay, this is not straight on the car, okay? This has to have a bit of a crown on it as well everything has to have a crown there's no sharp edges on it like in terms of you know crisp straight edges straight lines going down to it um there's a couple of ways you're going to address this uh this still had to be cut down and it's also got to be rolled out you could if you had a deep throat stretcher shrinker 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 you could run it in there and shrink this up to get that crown back in it again okay now that would be the easy way to do it if you had the machinery to do it. I don't have a shrinker stretcher and I don't have a deep throat shrinker stretcher at all. See if that light can see that. There you go. See the light? That's the reason why I left it all black. You can actually see the hollow in the middle of it there when I moved the light over. Now the reason for that is, is because this is crowned this way and it's also crowned this way. And when you put a straight bend in it, this got a tendency, the metal's got to go somewhere. So it takes it from in here and it pushes it down to try to get this to square up. Now that crown is still there, it's just that I got to get it back. Now, I can turn around now and I can fool around with this and figure everything out and whatever. But I know this is, uh, it's an issue now. I was hoping that it was going to be okay, but um, it is not. And I'm not fussy on this, how straight this is. I like to have that a bit of a, a concave crown like that. So what I ended up doing then, I ended up cutting the sides off it and left just a quarter of an inch lip on it, okay? But leaving a quarter of an inch lip on it, I got the crown back in it again, okay? If you look at the light coming down across that one, one of the reasons why I left the, uh, the black on it, so you can just keep an eye on that. So now when you stand back, you can look at it, you can see that it's got a bit of a crown on the scoop, okay? There's little details like that as makes the difference in it, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and trim this one up the same way I trimmed that one up and get two of them uh, set up on the car. Now I just cut that lip off and I haven't done a thing, but you can look down that there now just by relieving that there, you can actually see the crown going back in it again, right? I haven't done a thing with it, I just cut the piece off. Uh, a lot of times you can manipulate up to like a half an inch on a roll, uh, to get a crown to fight the actual lip any more than that a half inch or up to an inch like that I find saying you're going to need shrinker stretchers for it That's the reason why I left the lip there and I'll weld it in along here so that I got a nice edge on the top side here But you can see the crown is back in it again there now Now right here is a crown on the front of this here. I wanted to leave that in it That's the front of the hood section These scoops comes ahead and then they start to tip down but they tip down just before the opening, there's a roll on them. As you can see, the roll is there, okay? What I did is I cut back uh, two and a half inches and cut the corner off it so that, uh, it relieved the roll. So now you can actually see that that there is all rolled up. And over here you can see, I haven't got it done on this one here now, she's fighting it, okay? So when I cut this back down, this will relax and it will fall back down to where I want it to go to. You can see here, all I did is I put a cut up across it, as you can see. And it actually just really really relaxed itself and fell down below it. See, so I'll trim that off there and out of the way.
Okay, what you saw me doing there, I went and took the short piece that I cut off the screw, and I turned around and put it around, over on the pipe bamboo, and I rolled out the edge of it. What this is going to be is the actual side still again. So this is going to be able to come down here and then flow into the hood this way here. After I made one, I went ahead then I made a second one. All right? So that matched that one. Okay? I made sure two of them were the same. One was left, one was right. And uh, got two of them to fit on the car. So basically this one here will be... Oh, this, one, this one here. How this will work is this will go here. Like so. And you can see that it's laid on the hood there. And then that'll go up there and then the scoop will weld on the top of this here. But now I got to trim this off uh, to get the proper, because this tapers back. It's not uh, actually, this here's about two inches or so along here. But this actually comes up here and it tapers back. To find a contour that I wanted on this here, I got it all rolled off now so it has to be curved. I'm going to use the hood itself. Okay, all I did is I clamped it in place. I knew this here had to be a certain height on the front and on the back here it had to be a certain height on the back and I marked it there. So all I did then is I just came along and found the highest point there which is right here and brought it up in the front till it matched there. And uh, all I'm going to do now is I'm going to trim this off, mark this on the back side here and trim it off so that way it'll flow to the contour of the hood. Because if you ever looks across the hood, if you see it there, it's actual crown, see? So I'm talking about flat panels, um, nothing's ever flat, and you can see it across that there. And that's always the, the trick to making uh, panels look good, is to always have a crown in them. Now that I got them trimmed up, what I'm going to go ahead now, and because I got the shape there, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to weld them on to the side of the scoop. I know it's the angle and they got to be on. Uh, I was going to weld these onto the hood first, and then weld it on the scoop, but I think it would be a lot easier to weld them onto the scoop first. Um, I'm still contemplating on different things I'm doing with this. Uh, one thing about projects like this here is that sometimes you just need to get away from it and think about stuff. Um, I was at this last night and uh, I got at it and I started thinking a bit. I said, I'm going to give this up for the night. And so I went in out of it and I slept down and I thought about it. And I figured this would be a lot better to do it this way. And sometimes you just got to sit back and think about projects like this. It is a big project. So you got to really think things out, just rushing into it and doing it. Sometimes you just got to lay things down and uh, go away from it and think about it some more. So I'm going to go ahead now. I'm going to put this in place and tack weld that in place. So I have the two sides tack welded in place. I come down roughly about a quarter of an inch all the way along and just tack welded it in so many places all the way around. So now that flows to the contour of the metal that's on that there. So that roll edge is the same as this here going right along it. Made sure that was the same on both sides. Now what I went and did, I'm here sitting down figuring out my next game plan. But my first game plan is, is I got to find, I got to be able to put this back every time in the same place. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of clicos here and here and this panel. So that here is held in place so I can put it back every single time. Because the next thing I need to figure out is this out here. I got to make the panel to flow down here. And got to get the contour and whatnot on it. So I'm going to go work on that but first things first I'm gonna put a Clico into these here so now I got four points two on each one where I can actually put this back so it allows you to turn to the same location every time so now all my measurements will end up being the same every time it was a bit tricky because I took a uh, hundred measurements X measurements through the middle here distance from the center line to this one distance between two of these distance between two of them distance to the back here distance to the front up here all this type of stuff, I took a whole bunch of measurements so I can get them laid in the same place. So now I'm playing around with getting the heights. I have this measurement here. Um, and it's about an inch and a quarter across the front here. So I have there a couple of pieces of wood put underneath it there. The back has got to be parallel to the hood itself. So I got that set up with a block of wood to give me the measurements there. So now I got an idea of how high these two front corners are. I'm not concerned about the middle because... Once I get these two figured out here, this one here and this one here, I'm just going to lay them on the car again against the hood here, scribe a line, and then I'll cut it, and then that will be my outside edge. Um, the issue that I got here with this body line, uh, I've noticed that in the um, pictures that the outside edge is extremely uh, tipped out more than it is on the inside edge, which is good because I might be able to fudge this up now and have this taper back and just leave that line there. 
and this one up front um the way this one comes forward it comes out past it but it comes to a point up here somewhere so i might be able to just bring it to a point right on that crease which is uh would work out fantastic because then the crease would just continue on up to the front of the car uh i might soften up the crease uh, after the fact i don't know i might roll it off because the original 442 hood is uh changed a bit right we're going to sit down now and I'm going to roll up the next two pieces, these outside edges, because i got measurements to go by now, and I'll make two of them. Okay, I want to point something out here. Uh, I went ahead and I got them two pieces of steel over there all um, bent up and everything and ready to go, but i got to do one more thing to one of them. Uh, right here, this panel has come down, turn, and mount on top of this panel here. Now, the problem with it is, is this panel, the actual hood itself is not flat here. It has a crown as well going this way. On this section of the hood, okay? So, what I got done is I got the, the panels over here. And I got one of them just finished the second one bent up. And the first one I got done and fitted. And I got it already. Got some cleat goes in it to go in place and whatnot. Uh, but if you look at it. I have a crown on that there, okay? You see the way that rotates up. It's not perfectly straight. I'm going to show you how i done that. All I'm using the voice. And I'm just manipulating the metal a bit, okay? All I'm doing is I'm putting it in there and just tweaking it a small bit. Nothing serious, okay? I'm just taking it, moving it bit by bit. Don't get carried away with it. Good time, too much, and you'll keep it up. There you have a crown in the panel. So I got the panels uh, put in place and I put a couple of clecos in them. And the whole plan is here now is what I got done is I went and raised up the front here to get my distance here right. Okay. And then I bent this in here and I marked it so it was in the middle of that little strip that I went and done. So I was down about a quarter of an inch or so. And I've done the same thing back here and I went on the back side of it there. Hard to see. Uh, I'll try it this way. Yeah, there you go. You can see where I marked it, okay? So I got them two points there now. I'm going to take them off there now, and I'm going to bring it out here, strap it onto the fence, the side of the hood again, and I'm going to scribe it uh, so i got the nice contour, the same as this here. I did the same with the other side. I got that marked. So I'll get both of them marked and cut there now. Again, all I did is I had two points marked, and I clamped it, line up the front section there, so I lined up like that on the edge there and I come back here on the inside and I line up the position in here and then I scribed it with a marker. Okay, that's what I went and did. Now you wouldn't think that'd be uh, very much, would you? But uh, over here I have the other one marked. You can see it here now. And I take the straight edge and lay it against that there. And line up, I'll line up that end down there. And I'll line up this end down here. And look. That tells you how much of a crown is in that panel, in that hood. You would never think, looking at that hood, you would think that's straight. Okay? Pretty straight. There is a slight crown in it. You can actually see it there now, plain as day. But this is the little things that uh, you tend to overlook when it comes to building panels. Every panel has a crown. So I got one side fit in place. And I got the measurements off the back. So this here is parallel to the, to the hood itself. And as you can see here now, this comes up. And it's about a quarter of an inch from the top lip. And, and I basically played around with it so that it actually is the same all the way along. Up here in the front, i got to lift it up a small bit. It's uh, off of it. So all I'm going to do now is just go ahead now and start from one end and start working my way along there and tack that along there. So that uh, when it's all said and done, it'll have a nice crown on it, see? It'll flow with the rest of the car. Well, I got them welded on. And then I started going back and measuring everything. Okay, I say I got a good hour into this now. Uh, I had everything welded up, and then I just went around tweaking things. Um, then making sure two of these were the same height. This here was going, like, nice flowing to that. I got this piece of, uh, I got this level lay across this here just so I can get, you know, a visual on how, what the distance are on both sides to make sure that everything is symmetrical looking. You're not going to get it perfect, but I'm trying to get it as close as I possibly can. And like I've been moving that back and forth, tweaking, cutting spot wells, tack welding them again, measuring up heights. Like this height here and this height here is the same. This height here and this height here is the same. 
and same thing back here outsides are the same insides are the same uh, the distances between here are the same right the distances from here and here are the same same with here as well going out to the edge of the thing out to the edge of the fender all of them are the same and then i just turn around and i lay this cross top of it and stepped it back and i, I caught a few wells and because it was wider on one side than the other and tried to get it half close and they came around i can tell you very hard to try to make two items that are right next to each other symmetrical okay i've been uh, at this a while now i'm happy with it now whereas two i can go on and start piecing together everything else on it now uh that was the big thing getting the heights on these sides and getting everything flowing right uh you know that's basically all i got done okay and it's going to work out pretty good because the line's right up with the bead on the back side of it here so there's the back piece now it'll come down and fade into this bead here so it'll work out all right of course you can tell that grade is going to be gone and uh, up front here should be fine I, uh, these got to turn inwards like this here got to come in so i'm thinking i'm going to meet him them here because this has to come forward and come this way so they're probably going to end up meeting here somewhere so it might work out uh, that worked. Not getting too far ahead of myself. The nice seam in the middle there, going down through the middle of it there. All that worked out. And she got a nice crown on her, going both ways. She got a crown on her this way. Right, and all the panels. She got crowns going off the front of her, going this way. You can see her on the uh, level. So, if that's just a little detail uh, that uh, you tend to see to overlook. You'd be wondering, it just don't look right. And a lot of it's because it's not a crown panel. So I'm going to go ahead now and start building the two back sections. Okay, I got two pieces cleaned up. I measured them up and everything. So I got two pieces for the back of the scoops. I went over here then and I marked down and I cut these on an angle here. Left a bit of a lip on the back side here. And I basically eyeballed all these here. Just because I'm going to trim them up now as I go. I've been looking at the diagrams or the picture that I got and get an idea so the first thing i'm going to do now is i'm going to put this roll on the back side piece so i'm going to take two of these pieces now and put two rolls on the bottom side of them and then uh, start fitting to the car because the well the way it works is the roll is on the bottom but it gets narrower as it goes across to the other side of the, the hood scoop because the back of the hood scoops um changes they're a bit higher on this corner than around that side there because of the way the hood is shaped okay so get them done now so I got the two pieces of steel bent up, got the little roll on the bottom side of it. Then I come over here and I test fit it onto this panel here, laid it back on the angle. I measured off a couple of distances here, five and three quarters I think it is. And had so this here is parallel to the back of the window. And I had to do some trimming and cutting. So now it fits and you can see it lines pretty good up on the sides here now. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and trim this up on both sides, get it uh, so I can trim it up so I can mark it here. So I can put a bend in it, to bend it this way here to tuck it underneath this here, or lay it on top of it, one or the other, whichever it is. I'm probably going to tuck it underneath it, and um, have it so that I can bend it and fit it in place. And then I'll go ahead and I'll do the other one. So I'll get all this straightened away now and get all them cut and bent up. So I got it all trimmed up. I trimmed it up a few times and then I tweaked it a bit and then I turned around and I marked two corners and I bent the top over and then I trimmed it up. I have this tucked in underneath this here. I got a little small lip left on it. I'll show you what I left there. That's all I have left on it. I've after trimming it up, and that just tucks in underneath the panel there. I like to leave a little bit of a lip, especially in the cases of what I'm doing here. Uh, this being like a hood scoop, it's nice to be able to do the cotton bud on all this, but it can get dangerous. Um, the problem you're going to run into is the. Um, the panel is going to want to fall away from me pretty easy because it's such an open panel, okay? It's not like a quarter panel or uh, anything like that. You're talking about the center of the hood, right? So, I'll put that back in there. there <clears throat> so, I got it all put back in there. So, all I'll do now is I'll just tack well down across there for now. And I'll tack this down here. I'm tacking the whole thing together first to get it all fitting. I got this worked out pretty good. The line runs up and comes right to this, so I'm not going to do nothing with this. This will roll off of this section here, and I'll leave this factory bead alone. And uh, as you can see, it fits across the back of here. i got to fill that in, of course. Um, 
and over here at fits best con as well so i got that all straightened away and it's pretty simple and straightforward i'm happy with it i took the measurements that i've had and it gave me about three inches about right to here off the roll from the bottom of the roll up and it works out it's got a nice little roll on the bottom side edge of it so i'm gonna go ahead and tack that one on and get the other one made and installed as well so there i got two of them in place i got the same measurements on both sides a nice rolled edge on. I got them tack welded across the top and on the corners. I only got this all tack welded together because I want to take it off the car to actually weld up. It's starting to take shape there now. You look up and you can see the way it's all coming together. And the, and the top of the, the scoop, you can see the light on it. You can see how uh, the light, see? Keeps it nice and straight. It's one advantage of leaving the paint on it. So now the next thing I gotta get started on now is this front section. Hmm, that's gonna be interesting. Okay, the first thing I had to do is I had to figure out my two side pieces. Now I have some pictures here. If you look in this picture here, you can see that there's about a quarter of an inch gap all the way down or a quarter inch wide lip that goes right to the front. So the front of the scoop is a quarter of an inch wide and it curves out on the corners. The curve itself from the end of the curve to the outside of the scoop is about an inch or so long. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make two strips that will uh, fit there. I'm not gonna worry about having a quarter of an inch wide, but I'll cut it out after. First thing, I want some piece, a bit larger piece of steel that I can actually get all the shapes to the outside done. So what I'm gonna do right here is I'm gonna want a strip across here to come down here, and I marked it off right here. I measured the scoop from in the pictures, and it come out to be, I think, six and a half inches from the front of this here. So I, I went ahead then, and I found some scrap steel, and I cut it off lint. Uh, I'm going to mark it for the different lengths now. All I'm going to do is this here. Is I'm going to lay this here like so. As you can see. And I'm going to do, uh, trim it here and tack weld it across here. And just let that sit like that. Okay. And that will be the front of the screw. Later on, I'll cut this around here and cut this off here. The quarter of an inch that needs to be. I need a bit of bulk here. It's very hard to put a strip there with only a quarter of an inch. Uh, I'll trim that after the fact when I faces off this section in the front here because I also need a quarter of an inch lip coming down from here. Again, I'll do it all with large pieces. But right now, I'm going to concentrate on getting this in and getting these outside edges done. So as you can see, I got four of them cut off and welded, tacked and welded in place there. So now i got my angles down. It comes off, flows off the end there. And you can see what I got done here just to show you. See, later on I'll cut this out when it's all made up. I get the side and everything. I can trim all this up. And then I'll have that upper lip like it's supposed to be there. It's very hard to try to make up that little piece. Anytime that you've got to turn around and make something like this here. It's always better to start with a wider piece. And then cut it down after it's fitting and put in place. Because trying to get that there and then trying to weld that to another piece over here. That'll only go all warp each and stuff like that on it, right? So now I gotta make the two the side sections here for both sides of these now. And I just went underneath the bench there and I went and scrounged up some old scrap that I had there. So I'm gonna cut out four pieces now that I can use to uh, bend up and make this section here. So I'll go ahead now and get them cut up and uh, drawn up and cleaned up. Okay, I went ahead and I cleaned up four pieces like this here, okay? That's what I started with was something simple as that. Then I went over to the pipe anvil and I bent some shapes into them. I ended up with a piece like this, okay? That's what I ended up with. Then what I went and did is I fit it in place here, like so. And if you look at it in behind here, you can see the lines are pretty good, okay? Then I just start cutting it and trimming it, cutting it and trimming it, you know, trimming off a bit at a time and trimming it so it bought up to this here. Then I come over to here and you can see I got a butt weld up along here and I trimmed it back. I wasn't concerned about having it perfectly level, okay? All I did is I trimmed it back so that it was pretty close to where it had to be. Then I put a tack weld down here. I wasn't concerned with it. I had it flush up here and it fits nice and it's got a nice flow going to it here. And it ends up in the front. Then I went and drilled and put a cleco in it. Now that I got it situated there, what I'll do then is I turn around and I end up grinding all the top of this down. With a snare grinder. I just grinded the top off of this here so it went flush. So it ended up like this, okay? So then all I turn around then is I just spot weld it right along the whole thing. Going along there. So then what I'll do now is once I get this all welded, I'll take it off and I'll weld it on the inside so I can do a nice job grinding and dressing these edges and same along here. What I'll end up doing, I'm going to do about from here forward on the scoop, 
and get everything grind and dressed because I still got to do a bunch of welding around the top here. They got to be done. That's going to take a long time because I got to control the heat. I'm just going to have to spot weld it, let it cool, spot weld it, let it cool. If I throw too much cold air at it, it can warp the panel very quickly. Okay, so I just got to take my time welding all this up here because we're in a hood. A hood is totally different than side panels. Uh, the hardest thing in the world is to do is to weld the hood. I can tell you that now. Try to weld a hole in the center of a hood without warping it. Very, very hard. So this is what I got come up with, and it uh, works out really nice. It's got a nice flow to it. Flows to the scoop like so, like it does in the picture. Once I get this all welded up, then I'm going to work on making this piece in here. I'll trim all this back and start making this one in here. Much the same way. I'll use a large chunk and just shape it out, and I'll weld it on, cut it off, and grind it off, and weld it so it fits nice. I'm not too concerned about it. Like, it's always better to do something with a larger piece. Uh, then just try to make little tiny pieces to fit everywhere. Um, it's just, it, don't be afraid to you know large, use large stuff and then just cut it up as you're going. I find it just a lot easier. Like just leaving this little bit of a lip here, trying to trim that off so it fits perfect. I just find it so hard. Uh, for the time it took me to grind it off with the grinder, uh, it was no time. And then I got a perfect fit, as you can see. It's a perfect fit, going right along there now from the grinder. And I'll just weld it up. And that's them coming along. I'm going to get uh, all them there and I'll weld it up. So I went ahead and I welded them all up, took my time, welding them up, welding one spot at a time, going around, doing each one. I had two scoops here, and when I also went and did, I started to go around and welding up this here, just taking my time. I'm not going to turn around, I can weld this up and cool it and weld it and cool it. I'm letting this do naturally cool on its own. Uh, I find sometimes it'll shrink if you cool it too quick with the uh, uh, air hose, and that's the reason why I'm trying to save that there from warping up any. And I come over here and I've done the same thing with these ones here. Now, I'm going to uh, leave all this alone here now. I'm not going to do nothing else with that right now. I'm going to take this off, and I'm going to weld this up on the inside and get all this here dressed up so I can get this here looking proper out front. So I can trim this up here and trim this up here and put the last piece in, which is the front section here that runs around here. There's about a, a quarter of an inch lip here on this side as well, coming down across here on the front of these. So I want to make one piece to go right around here. Same way, large piece, just wrap it right around like that. And then I'll turn around and I'll weld it on all the way around, grind it, dress it, and then I'll trim it off what I don't want on the on the front of it for the opening for the scoop. So let's get that done now. So you just saw me, I welded it all up inside, and basically what I did then is I, uh, I welded it inside, then I turned around, I come out here and I grinded it all off and dressed it, okay? All I did to grind this off was a 24 grit on the air grinder, and uh, I grind the flat this side, grind the flat this side, and then I roll over the edge, okay? So I get a nice edge here. I went and dressed all this section here now because this is where I got to cut this here and come forward with this here to get this nice crisp edge, okay? Also, I got two of them dressed up. I wanted to verify how close they were together. I did run into an issue. This one here comes straighter down, and this one here has got a bit of a bow in it, okay? It's hard to see there, but I could see it. You can probably see it there. There's a bit of a bow in it right there, and this one's nice and straight. Now's the time to straighten this up. I'm just going to run a zip blade through that, okay? That's all I'm going to do. Tweak that up to where I want it to be, and re-weld it all up again. It's only metal, okay? Don't mind making a little bit of mistakes. Now's the time to address it, because I can tell you, it will annoy you later on if it's not, if two of these here don't match. They're so close together, two of these got to look the same. Okay? Uh, same thing over here. I just got grinded flat here, flat here, and then rolled over the edges. I've only gone, done it back as far as here, because that's all I was concerned about, was getting that look so that it flowed nice and came up to a point up to here, up to the middle here. Um, so what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to split this right here. And I'm going to repair that. I'm going to cut that and tweak that up to where I'm happy with it. All I did is I marked it along the area where I wants to cut it and raise it up. So I'm just going to cut right on through it. Now.
you see there now I cut it back some more, tweaked it a bit. I put a straight edge along here and a straight edge along here to get to them just like. And I found this piece of scrap that I trimmed off something earlier. And I'm just going to put that in place there now and weld that in there. And I'm going to weld it on the inside like I did before to give it strength. And I'm going to grind this off here again. I went ahead and I got the inside welded. We welded that again. And I got all the outside welded here. So now I'm just going to grind it up the same process as before. Grind it flat here, grind it flat here, and then round over the edges. And that should look like it never been tampered with. There you got it. All grind down, dressed again, all brand new. So you never got to worry about, like, you know, if you're not happy with something, like it's only metal, cut it, re-weld it again, repeat the processes again, weld it on the inside, and grind it all off. There's still lots of material there, right? Because uh, the way you're doing it, welding on the inside. So now that I got that done, and I'm happy with the way everything is, next thing I'm going to work on now is getting this section here closed up, or shaped up. Uh, this here has about a quarter of an inch line coming up here and then it rotates around this corner here and does the same thing here and then comes down a quarter of an inch. So I'm going to mark out a quarter of an inch now and just draw straight lines here and then figure out my corners and then I'll turn around and mark this in and uh, get this ready so I can trim this up. So all I did is took a black marker and I marked it up a quarter of an inch, marked it across here and I just drew roughly drew a little circle in there. And the same one over here. I never used nothing to, to basically make the turns. I was going to get pill bottles and and stuff like that and probably old discs. But I said, no, I'll just rough it in and I'll dress it with the grinder as I'm going. And I'll get it cooking, looking good that way. I might make a template. <gasps> Templates. I might make a template like from this one to this one so I can repeat it. Make sure that they look the same. And same with the outside ones as well. I'll just make something that I can put in behind it, scribe it, and then I can flip it over and bring it over here and I'll see if it lines up with this one. So I'm just going to take the zip blade now, go up and cut up here, cut in across here, and then just cut this section out here. I'm going to just, you know, cut this here in a, uh, a few or two or three angles now just to get this here back and out of the way. So because it is a hard spot to turn around and try to cut with a, um, with a pair of tin snips. So I'll just roughly cut this out of the way and then start cutting back to that. Now I just cut it straight up there and then I cut it across that way and I'm left with this mark here. All I'm going to do is take a stone on the grinder and just slowly work my way back to it and grind it off. You could probably get like a, a an orbital sanding bit or something like that. Take sandpaper and do that uh, if you want to be really precise with it and, you know, worried about going too far. I'm just, uh, to me, I've just learned how to use these very gently over the years and I can get it back so far and the rest of the way I'll just file it. Now the rest of that I'll just do by hand with a file. There you have the openings are made. Pretty well straightforward. I just rounded out the edges there. Done it all freehand. I think it come out pretty good. Compare the two of them there. Uh, and this still needs a little bit of work. More gotta be taken out of this one, I think. I'll make up some little template or something for the back of that now and scribe that and go according to that one, see how close it is. And I'll just make two of them because this is the biggest problem you're going to have is when you're looking at two of these, trying to get both of them figured out. The way it's grinded, it looks a bit different there where the light is hitting it. But it's the same contour in both of them there. But I'm pleased with it. Next thing I'm going to do here now is uh, I'll fine tune all them corners. But all I'm going to do is get a flat piece of steel that will go up here, roll around this here, come across here and come down here. I'm not worried about closing it in. This here got a, it's closed in back as far as here. And it steps up and then it comes around here about a quarter of an inch all the way around and then it comes forward here and steps down and is joined on here that's the way it's done uh, from the one that I got in pictures so the well, first thing I do is do the same thing as I did up here in the front I'm just going to make a large piece to go along there and then get it so I can weld it in and get this edge nice and get this edge nice here 
and then what I'll do is then I'll end up going back and trimming out the inside after the fact. So that's our next step, but I'm pretty pleased with them so far. They're coming along nice. Okay, went out in the van and got some more steel. Another sheet of this stuff. This is a cabinet of some sort. I picked up a, a dozen more sheets of it, and it's uh, 18 gauge. And I've been using it for everything. It's got a white film on it. You've probably seen it in many videos. I went ahead and I cut two strips out, uh, 30 inches long, and I cut them about two inches wide, bigger, longer, you know, the normal routine, right? Then I went ahead and I come over here and I bent it up to fit around the opening here. And the reason why I'm doing this here is because I want to have everything the same all the way around. I want to have it perfectly vertical. A lot of this will be cut out after the fact, but in order to get the proper look, you can probably put a little strip in there, but it'd be very hard to get it all right. So all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to mark this and trim it back a bit, and then I'm going to start fitting it in there and tack welding it in, and then I'll do the grinding and the welding all the way around. I'm leaving all this here for now. So I can uh, get this all welded up so it's nice and solid. And then I'll mark this in here and trim all this here to fit after the fact. Out here, this here all stays. This will be welded right along here. Okay. And in here, this is all open. So i got to go back into here some way and to cut the hood off so that it actually opens up to the center hood. Because I'm planning on cutting this back. I'm not going to cut and button this. Uh, very hard to do on a hood, okay? Because you're up in an open panel. I'm going to cut this probably back to here and overlap it. I'm going to trim this back a bit more and everything. But when I'm finished grinding this off, it'll be hard to notice that it's done to it. And all the strength and everything will be there. And when you look at it from the bottom side, you won't see it. Because there'll only be like maybe a quarter of an inch of metal there. Trying to cut and butt this here, the panel is so big and so flat. When you start welding it, it's just going to want to move on you, okay? Uh, it's not like a side of a car. There's a lot of structure on the side of a car. Uh, the hood, there's very little structure in it. Uh, in a large hood like this here so you know doing the cut but I've tried it and experimented with it and it's not the easiest that's the reason why you see me what I got done here I've done a little bit of overlap but I've done it on my corners if I got to overlap places I like doing it on corners and edges now as you can see I got a trim back it's still a little bit longer okay so I'm going to fit that place there now and I'm going to weld it across there and I'm going to start grinding this flat this way here and tack weld in the corners and I'll actually weld this around here, take it off, flip it inside out, weld the inside as well so that way I can grind and dress the outside so I've got a nice crisp edge all the way around there and then what I'll end up doing then is I'll trim this back here to make it look like the original one that's on the car. Okay, I got them grinded down and I went ahead and I spot weld them along here. All I've been doing is over here, you can see it here. You can see there's a lip here, okay? All I've been doing is basically working my way around. I grind a bit, and now I got this grinded off here, as you can see. I grind it flat, and I'm gonna put a couple spot welds in here, and I'm gonna continue on, do another section about this long, grind it flat, a few spot welds. Can't go grind it all off, because you're gonna break the welds and it'll all come clear. You gotta work your way around. You can see I got this section here all done, and tack welded. And as I've been doing this here, I'm also going around tack welding this here as well. Like I said earlier, I wanted to uh, take my time with this, on letting this cool on its own. So when that's cold, I'll just turn around and go around and do another pass on it and just take my time. It's time consuming, but um, I just wanted to take my time with it and just let the metal do what it wants to do and try to control the heat just by welding itself. Right? So I'm going to go ahead now and get this one here all grinded up and weld it up.
Now, if you saw me there, I was welding it. I was basically welding about every four inches or so, coming up along there, and then I stopped, okay? I never went no farther than that. I left it alone, and I'm just letting that cool down so that it's cold to the touch. It's still a bit warm. I'm not going to bother with it. I find when it comes to these large panels like this here, if you're going to start rushing it, you got to take your time. I'll actually walk away from this if I get frustrated enough from it and just take a breather and come back at it again. You got to be slow. Up in these corners, you can be tricky. You will figure that you're going to weld every four inches here and then you're going to start welding every four inches here. No, the problem with it is, is this corner is all one unit, okay? The heat from here and the heat from here is going to here. So I'll weld up this side here. I'll weld up this side here. I'll weld up that side there and I'll weld up that side there. Let them cool down. I'll work to the front. And I'll work the front. The front's got a lot more strength in it because of the sides. And I'll weld that. When the two sides are cool, I'll come back here and I'll spot weld across the back. Don't go overlapping and going from one corner to the other because the heat is still in this metal right here on this corner. The heat from here uh, will transfer to here and the heat from here will transfer to here. And this corner will fall away from you. So, you know, when anytime come weld in the corners and open panels, uh, stop. This is the reason why a lot of people have troubles with it because they end up getting warped each on the corners because they figure it's because this is one plane, this is another plane, it's going, it won't make a difference. But this piece of metal is part of this and this piece of metal is part of this. Well, that was tedious. I got it all welded up, all the way around on both of them. Took my time. As much as I wanted to rush this, I know what's going to be involved with it to the next step. If I welded it and warped it up, this would be all full of filler. And uh, it would be low spots in it all over the place, but I just took my time. Let it cool down so it was cold and went back and tacked it every four inches or so again. Didn't have my two spot welds too close together. Left it alone. You kept wanting to go back and oh, I can weld that one up. I'll just only a couple of more weld it up. No. You gotta walk away from it. I have a lot of experience over the years of fooling stuff up. <laughs> and that was one of the things that I found is that if you take your time, uh you'll get I have a good outcome. Welding is a nightmare at times. I'm a good hour and a half now just welding up these three sides or the and each one of them there taking my time. 
and like you're talking about i had i had a pretty well half welded up when i started so you know a lot of most of my time was just stood around waiting as you could see just you know taking my time but i had to do it because i had to get this finished i've been putting it off and putting it off to weld that off and get that done so i'm pleased with it um what i'm going to do next now is i'm going to flip it over weld inside here Get that welded up and back here in these corners get that welded up i'm not going to weld these up on the inside here because i got to go through all that process again this got a lap weld on it, so it should be fine so i'm going to grind that off there and roll it over but i'm going to leave that alone now i want to grind that right here on the car and it's the same process again can't go put too much heat in because you can warp stuff with with uh, grinding but we'll cross that when we get to it but i got to weld up these corners because they were butt welded here and weld them in there to give me a bit of strength and everything get them done and then i can turn around and start uh grinding all this up and finishing off front here get all this dressed on the outside I went ahead as you've seen and I welded it all up in the front along here coming along the back side here I welded everything on the inside coming up along here back in these corners I welded up the two corners as well uh, right here is an overlap going along here. I'm going to clean that up. I probably ended up fiberglassing that or uh, putting seam seal or something on it. I haven't decided yet, but I'm not going to weld none of this yet because I'm very concerned about warping this up. And uh, I don't think I'm going to bother with it because it's welded on the outside and it's not a lot of material there. And, and, it's, and it's an easy thing to fill because it's only a small, like uh, a quarter of an inch lip there. And the weld is right on the lip itself. And if I went to weld all this up here now, uh, I'll be another pile of time into it, and I'm liable to warp this up. So, you know, it's, it's always a chance you got to take, but uh, I'm happy with that there. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over here now, and I'm going to start grinding all this up, dressing all this up along here, and get all this here grinded up. I got this other one done, and fit back on her. As you can see, I just grind it off the front here, grind it a flat here, grind it a flat here, rolled off the edge. You can see how nice that panel looks now. I gotta cut this back now, I trim this for the opening. I lift it all like that so you can actually see it. See the way it is there now? That'll be cut back after the fact for the opening in the, in the scoop and the sides will be left alone. But I grind it off the sides. And all this is, this is like an overlap weld. I've said this before in a few other videos. If, you, if you're if you on an edge, or on a rolled edge, you can overlap welds and grind them, and they come out pretty good. I can go back and start filling in all my little spots, and I, but I'm not going to bother with it. Like, I'm really concerned about warpage. I really like the way this turned out. This, got a, this is a real nice panel here now, and uh, I have got to do nothing with it. So basically, as you can see here now, all I got to do is fill this outer edge, where it goes on the hood one of the biggest issues you got when building scoops like this is uh you know when it's all said and done you rush it you get the prime done then you put, end up putting a lot of fiberglass in it, a lot of filler in it and all you're doing is you're going to end up making the hood extremely heavy uh so you spend a lot of time on the metal prep and get everything done so it's very little filler that has to be done on it uh as, as best again right but you can see the way it's all done the way i roll off my edges and everything here so the old scoop came out nice. There was a fair bit of work involved in it. So, right. so I'm going to go ahead now and I'm going to go over here now and get this one here all grinded up and get both of them fitting on the car. So I went ahead and got this one all grinded up. Uh, next thing I got to do on this now is I got to cut out the opening in the front. Now if you look at these pictures here that were given to me, it was roughly about an inch here on the bottom side. Uh, to the top of the lip and there's probably about a quarter of an inch lip and then it rotates around to the flat side and there's a bit of round edge on the corner and then it's cut off but i'm just going to cut it off square and then i'm going to round it uh, off after the fact so i'm going to go ahead now and take both of these now and trim both of these up so that the opening is there some of you might be wondering okay how did tony cut that out uh well i cut all this here with the electric grinder with the big one with the four inch uh, cotton wheel on it and the corners all i used for that was the air grinder and I had a small wheel left around I have a bunch of them one of these that's been uh, left around and I used that and cut it down with that so there you have it the two scoops are made everything is done on them now I got them all cut out you can actually see the cut in the hood there see the little lip on them going along that edge on both sides see the little lip 
Corners are cut out. This is an inch high, like the measurement shows that I got. This is getting pretty long here now. So I have a lot more work to do to mount this to the hood. So I'm just going to end this one here because these scoops were a big undertaking to take on. And now I have to do a bunch of work. I got to uh, weld up these in the back here on the hood here. Prep the hood. I got to cut all the center of the hood out. Figure out what way I'm going to design this up here. Because this has gone so far. And uh, for the opening in the hood. Figure out something for that. But the, um, the hood itself, the scoops itself, uh, straightforward and simple. Just made from an old 2000 Chevy pickup hood that I started with. Uh, the top and the sides are uh, 22 gauge and the front sections here and the pieces that I welded into it are all 18 gauge the back itself is the same thing uh, that is uh, 18 gauge on the back side as well so I got to put a piece in here now as well but I'm very pleased with how it came out as you can see you got a lot of things going going on you got nice crowns going on rolled edges but you can get pretty crazy with all these edges here now you wanted to uh, this is pretty well close to filling now what I would do with it this here now I would do all my wells now with fiberglass short strand fiberglass and then I'd fill it all but I'm gonna weld it on the hood first before it does that I want to get everything else done but uh, uh, came out nice opening came out nice and I'm amazed at uh, how it flowed along with this here by I'm not sure if I'm gonna leave this here yet because I think this is going to look really long coming in here. I might round this one off a bit on the front. I'm not quite sure. That is not there on the 442. Uh, the front of this hood, like I said earlier, is totally different than uh, on a 442. And the problem being with this, I don't know on these cars if you got changed rad supports. I know the bumpers are different. The hood is different. I don't know if the fenders are different. Uh, I know the headlight pots and buckets and grill all as different. So this is the type of thing if you wanted to go with a 442 hood... Uh, you would have to change a whole bunch of sheet metal on the front of this car to do it. And we're, st we're sticking with the uh, Vista Cruiser hood. So we're going to put the scoops under the hood itself. But uh, I'm pleased how it came out. Um, it was a, a slow process. Take your time. Uh, one, one step at a time. Walk yourself through it. Size things up. Uh, complete each step as you're going. And do two of them at the same time. And that's the key to this, uh, like trying to build one and then trying to build a second one is extremely hard. Uh, I've had experiences with that in the past and I've learned very quickly that if I'm going to build two of something and they're going to be sat next to each other, then I'm going to have to build two of them at the same time. So it gets tedious. Um, Time-wise, um, I'm probably into this 30 hours. Uh, a lot of time is spent uh, just standing around waiting for stuff to cool down, uh, grinding, stuff like that, figuring things out. I've done this over a period of a few this is like over a week or more now that i've been at this uh i wasn't at it every single day because it's one of those type of jobs that you just got to get away from you can't be turning around and working on it and staying at it you're not going to do this on a saturday get up saturday morning have scoops saturday night uh you may but there the detail probably won't be there and you know you just you know concentrating on the little details and everything else should uh, fall into place and they should look the part but anyway, I'm going to leave this one here. I hope the tips were good, and until next time. here back at again with another one I'm finally back at the Vista Cruiser well I'm back at the Vista Cruiser hey Fitzy here back at again with another one I'm finally getting at the Vista Cruiser wagon 